Okay guys, Mr. Stark here. This is going to be a two-part video. What I want to do is show you how to calculate a resistive inductive circuit uh, based on Ohm's law and having all of your different formulas organized to make your life easier. You'll see that I took all the formulas out of the formula packet sheet and I organized them according to the item that we're looking for. So you would be looking in your sheets at home or in the lab. You'd be looking for, in this case, resistive inductive series circuits. There's some of the formulas, and the rest of the formulas are continued on the back page, resistive inductive series circuits again, and those are all the formulas. Once again, I took these formulas off the sheet, and I put them on the whiteboard in an organized fashion to help us solve quicker. Once again, this is coming out of chapter 13, resistive inductive series circuits. And what I want to show you is the example that they're doing in the book. And it starts on page 206, figure 13-2, and they give you a couple of quantities here. So they give us total voltage, they give us resistance, and they give us inductive reactance. So what I'm going to do now is come over to my picture which is exactly the same one that's inside your uh, packet. We have resistance, we have inductive reactance, and now we're here and we're saying to ourselves, where do we start? After doing these for a while, there's a pretty obvious place to start. Uh, what I taught you in the previous two chapters was that uh, normally in, in theory one, we are trying to get to RT. Well, we don't have an RT in this column. Right now, Z is replacing what used to be RT. It's the same in this case. RT really equals Z, and that's where we need to start. We need to ask ourselves, can I solve for impedance? So, impedance, we might remember, is the total circuit uh, current limiting or anything that's opposed to the flow of current resistive qualities and quantities uh, that are within that circuit. And because we're dealing with a resistive inductive circuit, we have impedance in resistance, but then we also have impedance notified as inductive reactance. Now, inductive reactance is acting like resistance. It's opposing current in a sense because of the counter EMF that's produced, but we can use that XL as an R type of quantity or a resistive quantity. So like all formulas, we usually want to take what we have and see where we can start. And I'm telling you the best place to start in this case is over here in impedance. And this is the formula. Z equals R squared plus inductive reactance squared. So how does that look in the calculator? Well, let's go down here. We know that we're dealing with R is 30 and inductive reactance is 40. So let's go down to our calculator. What we're gonna do is hit the second function to bring up the square root, which is right here, the X2 button. And now we have to enter 30 squared plus 40 squared equals 50. I'll go over that again. We know that we just solved for impedance, which gives me 50 ohms of impedance. Once again, we use this formula to solve for that because that's all we have. And if I had to break it down again, in order to bring up the square root function, you have to hit the second which is the upper left hand blue button that says second. Then you're gonna to go to the X2 or the square button because the secondary function above that button is the square root. That will bring up this bracket. So second function, X square. Then you hit 30 ohms, X2, the square button, plus 40 ohms squared equals. We'll do that in the classroom. Play around with that a little bit and you should get 50 ohms. 
Now, because this is a two-part video, I'm not gonna take it too far because I don't wanna run out of time, but what I wanna do is focus on solving for a column. And now I have two values over here and I can solve for something else in here. And it's kind of a dead giveaway because if we remember from our theory course, what is the same in a series circuit? It's current. So if I can solve for IT, I should be able to take that value and put it here and put it here because current is the same in a series circuit. So the best way of doing this, if you don't have Ohm's law in your head, is now you're gonna look for any formula that I have on my sheet that says IT. IT equals what? Well, let's go over to my IT formulas. They're right here, these three. And I'm gonna say, how can I solve for total current? Well, I do have ET. I know I do because ET in my formula, it's total voltage is 240. We just solved for impedance and we know the impedance is 50. So this formula is really I equals E divided by R. If it were Ohm's law, that's really what that says. So let's go and put in 240 volts, which is our ET. And we're gonna do 240 divided by 50, which is our impedance. And we're gonna find that we end up with 4.8 amps. And because current is the same in a series circuit, we can now take that number, put it here, and across the inductor. So, looking good, right? We've got two values in every column and three in that one. So why don't we solve for everything across the resistor first because that's fresh in our minds from theory one. And if we remember, our Ohm's law wheel, if I wanna solve for E, and if I have I and R, let's make that a little darker, I can simply come over to my Ohm's law wheel. If I wanna solve for E, I have I and R, I multiply them together. So, let's do that. Voltage dropped across the resistor is gonna be 4.8, times our resistance of 30, and we're gonna drop 144 volts across the resistor. So far, so good. Now, we can solve for P. If we remember our Ohm's law, we could certainly come on over here and make it easy. How do I solve for P? I can do E times I. I can do I squared times R, E squared divided by R. That's one way. Or I have them written down. Look on your sheets for your P formulas. Let's go over here. Let's take a look at my P formulas. Hey, let's take a look here. P equals voltage dropped across the resistor times current dropped across the resistor, which is basically saying E equals I'm sorry, P equals voltage times current. We're just dealing with the resistive quantities. That's why the subletter R is there. So once again, let's put it in the calculator. If I want to solve for P, which we're looking at right there, we know in this case, we're gonna do voltage times current. Our voltage is 144 times our current, which is 4.8 and we get 691.2 watts. We've got that column pretty much pinned down. Now we can go over to the inductive column. Now things are gonna change over here. Before I end this video, I wanna at least get a couple of these quantities in here so we can get a head start. How can I solve for inductance in Henry across this inductor. I need a formula that says L equals. So let's come on over here. I know where it is. It's on your sheet and there's only one of them. 
and it's right here. L equals inductive reactants divided by this. Well, we know we have inductive reactants. It was given to us. It was 40. What is this? 2 times pi times frequency. My frequency in this question is 60 hertz. Pi is equal to 3.1416, and 2 is a given. 2 times 3.1416 times 60 actually equals 377. Uh, because we use 60 hertz in the United States in most applications, you might want to remember this number. 2 times pi times f actually equals 377. So now all we got to do is divide this into this. Let's go back over to our calculator. 40 divided by 277 equals 0.144. Okay, 0.144. I'm sorry, I did, I, 40 divided by 377. is 0.106. So my inductance is 0.106 Henry. So far so good. Take a breath because right now we're on a good pace. We haven't seen anything too new yet except for that last formula. So we're going to take it a couple of minutes more and solve this column. So now we know we can solve for Voltage dropped across the inductor, because L stands for the inductor. So what formula can I use? Well, we have two quantities that are in Ohm's law. So if I'm looking for E, and if I have I and R, I keep saying this is R, but XL is synonymous with R in this case, so I can use an Ohm's law formula to solve for that. Or I can go over to my EL formulas, if that's too confusing, and find an EL formula that has any quantities that I have in this column. Let's look for EL. We come over to my ELs, which are all organized up here, and you're going to find this is the only one that I have. I already have current across the inductor, and I have inductive reactants. This is the formula we need. I don't have any of these other values, so I can't use that formula. So let's just solve for inductive reactants. I'm sorry, for voltage dropped across the inductor. And we know the formula that we're going to be using is IL times XL, or simply put, I times R. In this case, it's 4.8 times 40 equals. 192. Our voltage dropped across that inductor is 192 volts. We're looking pretty good. There's only one problem. If we remember our series rules, voltage was additive in a series circuit. We don't actually directly have that here because 192 plus 144 is 336, which is more than our source voltage. So Although it appears as though the rule doesn't fit, we got to put it mathematically in an equation that makes it fit. And we're going to be squaring it and square rooting it rather. So don't let that part bother you. We're going to get back to this part two in part two video. So keep what you have in front of you and be ready for part two.